how about trying to help the players kind of overcome the mental aspect of all of a sudden having guys diving at their at their knees? They don't see that all the time. That's what the psychologist is for. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not for that. But uh, yeah, you got to be fearless. And you got to be physical. You can't play on your heels, uh, you know, in this game to be successful. And, uh, and this is a big part of it. You got to, you know, you have to attack cut blocks like they're attacking you. You got to attack them back in the same manner, uh, you know, with technique and to stay aggressive. And uh, you know, they're hopeful that, you know, by the third and fourth quarter, guys are tired of getting cut and just come a little bit slower. You know, on our side, we're hopeful that you know they're tired of not making the cut block, and uh, we're physically bringing it to them as well. And they're tired of going after us. So, uh, you know, that's. They, they get a lot of games into the second half, and it's a ball game, you know, late into the second half, and, you know, and that's a big part of their success. Coming out of fall camp, going into game week, how many corners do you want to rotate? I don't know. At rotate, I just hope we got two. I'll be very honest. I'm not real concerned. You know, we have a depth chart. You all have seen that, and, uh, you know, I'm hopeful we, we, you know, we keep two of them healthy out there, so... Uh, you, know, you always like to be a, a solid two deep, and maybe a swing guy, and uh, I think that we have that. Is Cordray strong in his starting spot, or uh, you know, you never across the board. You never feel great about where you're at. You always want to be better. Um, you're never satisfied with where we're at. I think this time of the year, there's a lot of unknowns, and, and certainly, you know, you have your. You know, you wish you had another week of, of fall camp to iron some things out and get some guys better and, and uh, but that's kind of what the season's for and that you're you're hopeful that wherever you start you finish a heck of a lot better uh, by the end of the year and uh to say he's strong i think he's been you know pretty consistent and pretty solid and and not spectacular but but you know not far behind so is that ryan adrian in there behind Behind him, Adrian's not into the boundary, uh, but uh, uh, Ryan Ryan's playing some boundary. McKenzie's playing some boundary, and uh, you know, feel pretty good about those guys. All of them. With so many young guys, especially in backup roles, and playing a, an offense that requires assignment of football and defense, do you worry about missed assignments with the young guys against this offense? Um, it's not real complicated as far as assignments. You're, you're concerned more with technique. Uh, the consistency of our technique, you know, that's the biggest thing. Having good eyes, good feet, good hand placement, you know, those kinds of things. It's not real complicated from a from an assignment standpoint. Just technique doing their job. I'm trying to guess, tackle the dive, play the trap, uh, stand your feet, those kinds of things. Coach, the Death Valley crowd is usually an advantage for the defense. Um, when you're facing an opponent, an opponent like Wofford or Georgia Tech, where it's as much about concentration and discipline as it is adrenaline, uh, I don't want to say is, is it a detriment, but is it less of an advantage for games like that? Oh, I mean, I think anytime you got the home crowd screaming and yelling in somebody's ear, it can, it can be good, but they're only going to scream and yell if you're doing something well. So uh, if we're not playing very good, it's going to be pretty quiet in Death Valley. So. Uh, careful what you wish for, and uh, so you're hopeful that by the time we get to game time, our guys um, they can tune everything out and just play the game. You know, that's what really good players do and good good units do. You know, they're able to uh, not allow any distractions, uh, and so that'll be a challenge. With the time that Kendall missed, are you concerned at all about putting him out there? Uh, I'm not concerned with putting him out there, but just concerned with where he's at. But uh, look good the, the last couple of days um, that he's practiced, and um, he's an instinctual player. Finds the ball. Uh, he's not what you would call a rep guy uh, that needs to see it eight times over. Um, so that's uh, he's advantage. We did a, a, a good job, or their training staff, of keeping him in shape uh, as well. Wow, so um, I think he'll be fine. Where's Will in his development going into this first game? I, again, I, you know, I think Christian is um, he's ready to play and play winning football, and he's going to have some growing pains. Um, you know, you're not going to uh, 
whoever the uh, the bell cow three technique in the NFL is, and that's not him yet, and that's unfair to put him there. Um, uh, but Christian is um, ahead of the curve in his um, transition and his development, but he's got a ton to learn. He's going to make mistakes along the way, and he'll improve and grow from those uh, based on you know what we've seen. And uh, you know, a year from from now, you know, he's going to have uh, you know a ton of experience and a lot more functional strength to him. You know, he had almost four months. He was uh, had a wrist surgery. And he was really out of the weight room, pushing heavy weights uh, for almost four months prior to getting here in the summer. So uh, that part of him hasn't developed yet. And like I said he's got a lot to learn. You know, experience is everything. And uh, but we're awfully excited about you know. You know his continued progress, and and, uh, and again where he's at first games will be a lot different than where he's at game nine, game ten.